I do want to first thank folks who testified today. Um, I heard Andrew Kidduff, who is a constituent of mine in District 2. Uh, so thank you all for participating here um, and for sharing the sort of nuance and challenge that we have uh, in the South End. Uh, with this whole conversation, um, I do want to thank Chair Peterson as well for incorporating my amendment into the om uh, omnibus amendment package. Um, I want to say that I really wish I didn't have to bring this amendment, uh, but the truth is that the only mechanism being afforded to us, especially for folks in the South End, is uh, in order to keep us safe while using public infrastructure. Uh, is something like traffic enforcement. Um, you know, I, I think SDOT's own engineers would tell you that relying on enforcement for traffic safety is antiquated. We really need to be looking, as I've said before, at our street design. Um, and with the chair's indulgence, I want to share just a few examples of um, some of the things we've been waiting for, District 2, to improve our public safety infrastructure. Um, on Lake Washington Boulevard, <laughs> Uh, SDOT spent $400,000 of general fund money, and we'll be spending four hundred dollars of parks levy money to survey people on speed bumps. Uh, this is for a diminished version of our summer bike lane program uh, that's existed in the city for 50 years. So instead of building protected path for non-drivers along Lake Washington Boulevard, uh, we'll be studying it again. Uh, even as we've experienced hit and runs and multiple cars actually driving into the lake um, on Beacon Avenue, SDOT has studied parking impacts three times and finally installed speed cushions. Uh, but video evidence shows us that it has doing nothing to slow the speeds on that street. Instead, it's uh, we could just be improving the multimodal safety on that avenue. The department's made the choice to delay again protected bike lanes on MLK near Judkins Park. We've made the choice to use only paint to address safety on the rest of MLK. For seven months, I have been unable to get an update from SDOT about safety upgrades to protect South End bike lanes that we fully funded in the last budget. SDOT has made the choice to have piecemeal bus only lanes or continuous turn only lanes on Rainier, which we know drivers use as their own personal express lanes, instead of using the ample space on the road to make it safe and accessible to make a convenient north-south north -south connection for everyone. I, I have to say again, I feel like I've been saying this for years, I don't understand why over and over again the department chooses to delay safety projects in places where people are dying, where collision frequency can be used to set a watch, and where yet another driver, as I mentioned, drove into Lake Washington uh, and another driver committed a felony hit and run this weekend on the same street. In March, uh, on March 16th, Mamie Mabia Lutumba's four children lost their mother forever in another felony hit and run where the street where she was murdered looks exactly the same as it did before and detectives uh, uh, have provided no updates to her children about what happened. We need to be prioritizing road safety in every decision we make, especially during a national and a local road safety crisis. And that's why I'm here today talking about a traffic enforcement amendment because we've been boxed into this as the kind of decision that we're allowed to make because of our lack of ambition in making our streets safer for children and their parents and their grandparents and for disabled people. So uh, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, we've had on these two streets that I've included in this amendment, uh, MLK and Rainier, We've seen a uh, combined 270 collisions. That's according to WashDOT's 2022 data. That is 150 more collisions on these two streets than the rest of the streets included in this package combined. There have been 11 crashes on Rainier since we first talked about this bill on June 20th. There have been another six on MLK, according to WASH.Crash crash data. And we still have no major meaningful safety upgrades that have been prioritized in the South End. I don't see any urgency to redesign these streets to slow people down or to favor active transportation. MLK and Rainier are monuments to the decades of harm that's been done to the South End. When they were built, they cut through our communities, were used to separate and segregate, they pollute our valley with noise and CO2. 
Over time, residents in the South End have been fed this idea that these are the streets we deserve, that we need streets like this, even while the city pumps millions of dollars into other neighborhoods to improve safety and improve accessibility and improve transit and improve walkability. So here I am offering a traffic enforcement amendment because that's the only tool we've really been meaningfully offered. And still, my community wants to know Where's the equity analysis? Will tickets be issued on a sliding scale? Why do we need more surveillance, as my constituents commented today? So until we start to prioritize the lives of residents over speed and ease of motor vehicles, until we truly make a concerted effort to redesign our streets, enforcement is what we have. And at the very least, I will say, I'd rather have unbiased cameras capturing license plates than officers using their discretion to pull people over because we know what consequences that can often have.